Hello, and welcome to Mitchell Consulting's webinar series for our Mitchell University. Today we're going to be working with SAP Business One, and we're going to talk about recurring transactions. Uh, this webinar is being recorded. It will be available on our website, so you can visit us at www.mitchellgroup.com to view this as well as our others in our webinar series. For purpose of today's demo, we're going to be using SAP Business One version 9.0. Now, what we're going to talk about today, the recurring transaction template, is available in version 8.82 as well as version 9. So let's talk about um, what this is and how this functionality can help improve. As we may know from working with SAP, if you've worked with uh, other versions, there was recurring transactions available in the financial module. This allowed us to basically create a template so we can have journal entries duplicate on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Um, this was good for things like depreciation schedules and so on. What you can also do with SAP Business One is these financial journal entry templates can also affect business partners. So let's look at that first and then let's look at the disadvantages of that and the improvements with the um, recurring transactions. So we're going to go ahead and open financials and we're going to look at the standard template one. So here we have our posting templates. And if we look at this here, we were allowed us to create a template. And this was nice because, again, you can see that we can affect the business partner. So we can enter a journal entry. So in this case, we have a vendor. So we're going to credit the vendor. And we're going to debit some expenses. This actually showed up in the vendor file like an AP invoice and allowed us to make payments. The only disadvantage is it really wasn't an AP invoice. It was showing as a journal entry. So for example, if I take this template here and I do a journal entry, and we're going to go select the template. And you see here we put, let's say, $1,000. And we're going to go ahead and add this. You can see now we have a journal entry. And if we look at the effect of the business partner, in this case the vendor, we would see this in the vendor's aging. So if we open up the aging and we look down here at the bottom, we would see the information here. And again, this was fine because this uh, journal entry was considered a payable and it allowed us to uh, to pay this like any other invoice. The problem being is that the origin was a journal entry. If you notice here, if I click on this one, which is the PU origin, you can see that this was the AP invoice. So again, you have all the information on an AP invoice here, and it was flagged as an AP invoice versus this one being flagged as a journal entry. That was kind of a complaint from a lot of clients because then it would look strange on aging reports because if I ran an aging, you would see a bunch of AP invoices and credits. Or again, this functionality was available for the business partner customers, so you would see AR invoices and AR credits. And then you would see this journal down here, which kind of confused people. Instead of it being an AP invoice or an AR invoice and the payable and receivable agings. So what SAP did in the version 8, they allowed us to actually create templates. So now we can actually create a template and basically achieve the same functionality. And these templates are available in sales and AR. You can see here. And we're just going to grab this and move this to our common function so we don't have to keep opening the menu each time. And you can also see that it's available, the same functionality is just available on the purchasing sign. You have the two here. So what's nice about this now is that we can actually go here and we can create a template like we did with the journal entry. But then this template, we can decide what document we want to use. So for example here, you can see that we have an AP invoice, we have a sales order, and a couple other AP invoices. You can see that we have advantage now of all the marketing documents in SAP. So in this case, if I want to say, in this case, I'm getting a bill every month for the rent. Instead of having a journal entry where I'm using the vendor and my rent expense, I can actually now do the AP invoice. So 
So all the marketing documents are available. I can create quotes, sales orders, and so on. And what we do is we define the template. And then that template allows us to look at those recurring transactions. You see here, you can see these are all the recurring transactions. These are confirmation. These have been recurred, but we have not actually posted them. So you can see, for example, here, I have the same functionality. Now I have an AP invoice. It's sitting in a draft because I haven't actually created, but it's going to do the same thing. It's going to allow me to create an AP invoice, just like I was doing a journal entry to the business partner, and again, an offsetting account. And I can do that with all of them. You can see here I have it in sales order. And again, um, this is going to update the pricing each time I go in. But again, you can see a sales order. Let's see how that works. Let's actually create one and we'll go through the process. And again, we can see when it's recurring. So we're going to go in. And we're going to go to the template. And we're going to define here a new template. Make this a little bit bigger so we can see. We have to give the template a name, so we're just going to call this uh, demo one. Here we're going to decide what type of marketing document we're going to use. Again, we can do sales orders, purchase orders, and so on. Let's say we want to do a purchase um, quote or a purchase request. Um, we want to create this because we want to have this in the system because we know that we're going to actually send a quote <laughs> on a monthly basis for some items. Let's do a purchase quotation. All right. So here we're going to again, we're going to go in and we're going to actually create a document. All right, so we're going to open up here. And you can see that what we've done is we've opened up, move this over here so we can look at both. You can see that now we're going to actually create a document. This is going to be document 61. This is going to be my template. So I'm going to go here to my uh, vendor. And let's say I'm going to take um, Far East Computers. And I can set this up, and you can see this primary group, which is going to keep track of it. I can set uh, this information here. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using an actual purchase quotation form as a template. So here I can, again, put my items. Let's say I want to grab these three items. And we're going to go here. Let's put this, and we're going to go put the uh, and so on. So we're going to define this, and we're just going to add this. We're going to go ahead, and we're going to add the document. So now you can see we have document 61. This is going to be set up, and then the recurring period. How often do we want to do this? We can do it daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, semi-annual, annual, and just a one-time. So let's say we're going to actually do this on a weekly basis. So we're going to go weekly, and then we're going to say on what day of the week we want to do it. We're going to do it on a Monday. And let's go here, and let's actually, since we're on today, let's put this at 0301. So we can have it occur here. Uh, we're working on today's date so we can see it. Here we can do a valid until. Again, what this allows me to do is stop the process. Since this field is blank, this will generate every Monday until such a time that I have to stop it. Or what I can do is I can make it valid until. So let's say we purchase something and on a three-year lease. <laughs> And what we're going to do is we're going to build a vendor. Uh, we're going to pay the three-year lease. So we can set this up to run monthly. And then we just put a valid until date three years from now. And we would uh, it would stop. OK, so again, we're just getting the warning that the start date is earlier than today. So we're just going to let it go. OK, and that's how we set it up. So now we have it on the system. So what we can do now is we can look at our recurring transactions. And when we log in, we will actually see the recurring transactions here. So we can see here that we have all these things right here. And you can see instantly, once I created that, you can see on the confirmation of recurring transactions, since I did it, um, I did it to start on the, 
Here it is, demo. Since I did it to start um, the first and weekly, you can see here that the first one was going to be on the 4th, the 11th, the 18th, and the 25th. <laughs> so again, I have this weekly. And again, since I put my start date, you can see what it's going to do. It's just a matter of if I want to, if I, now if I want to post this, I'm going to select this one here. Again, I can drill into it, and I can see the information. So what we'll do is we're going to create this. You can see it's a draft. So we're going to actually just go in, and we're going to uh, execute this. So we're going to select this one. And we're just going to execute. And you can see that there's an error call because we specified uh, required date. So it didn't transfer. So let's go in and modify that. So we're going to go in here. And let's go and say 0304. We're going to put a valid until date. Um, OK, so now we have it set up. So if we look here and we come back, we can see here that we have the information. You can see now that one has been updated. So we're OK. So if we look at our purchase request, we can actually create a purchase request. So again, we can do that again. We can just click here. We can click Execute. And again, we can run the program. So we can do this on either one. So we can create our template. And it's a nice functionality. So we can see here, when we open up our recurring transactions, you can see all the different ones we want. So if we want to, again, let's say do a sales order, we can see the sales order here. We can click it. So we can execute it. And again, you can see that a sales order 326 was generated successfully. If we go to sales orders, and we go to sales order 3, you can see here that 326 was generated. So again, this is a nice functionality. What it allows us to do is an enhancement on the standard of recurring transactions that we had in the financials, in the journal entries. We can still use that one if we're dealing directly with journal entries. Let's say, in this case of a depreciation, we want to just debit and credit GL accounts, maybe a cumulative depreciation, depreciation expense, so we don't really need to have a vendor or a customer or otherwise you can actually do it in here. You can also set the confirmation of recurring transactions to open up automatically. So if you do want to use this functionality, so you can see when you log in, we can go to administration, system initialization, and under the general settings, we can determine here what we want to do. So under services, what I want to do is I want to display recurring postings on execution and display recurring transactions on execution. What this allows us to do is then when I log in in the morning, it will display all the recurring transactions automatically. It'll pop open so I have kind of an alert. I can also open the documents or the screen anytime I want by actually going into here. So let's review. Let's do another one. Let's review what we did. Uh, we're using a new functionality that's now available in an SAP from version 8.8 uh, forward. Uh, this allows us to create recurring transaction templates for all marketing documents. So what we would do here is we would go into our recurring transactions. You can see here we have this demo one. Uh, we can determine how what we want to do and the information. We can also, if we want to remove this, we can actually duplicate it and actually copy it. So let's do another one. Let's call this uh, demo two. Let's go here and let's create a uh, purchase order, let's say. Again, here we're going to tab and we're going to open up our documents. Oops. And we're going to go here. 
and we're going to open up our template, you can see that the purchase order template is the same as an actual purchase order. So here we're going to again, we're going to uh, select a business partner. So we're going to take uh, Far East Computers, Far East Imports. Again, we're going to go ahead and select our items. I'm going to go ahead here and say, let's make this uh, 175, 50, and 25. Take the tax out. So again, you can see here that we have a, a template, which we're setting up here for this amount. We can add it. We can determine when we want this template. So we can do it, again, daily, weekly, monthly. Let's set this for weekly. We want this to occur on, let's say, Tuesday. And we're going to start at 0301. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to determine the next one here. We can also put a valid date. And again, since we're dealing with a marketing document, we can also choose our warehouse. So let's update that. Again, it's just giving us a warning that the start date's earlier than today's date. We're just going to go ahead and say yes. So now, when we open up our recurring transactions, we will see here that we have them right here. So we can see here demo two. So in demo two, we can see that we have all the purchase orders. So the, here's the first one that's going to create. So we can again select it. We can click execute. And you can see that purchase order 303 was generated successfully. If we look at our purchase order, you can see 303 has been created. So again, nice, a really nice functionality to have in SAP. I really like that because, again, one of the biggest problems that the complaints we had with um, doing everything as a journal entry was the status. As we talked about when we did a journal entry, you can see that even though we have the ability of affecting a business partner, so this would be like an AP invoice, so we're going to credit the vendor and we're going to have an a debit. But again, this would always have the origin of a journal entry. So when you actually looked at the vendor, it was always kind of confusing on agings and other reports because it would always display as a journal entry, even though it's affecting the business partner's balance in the aging. So now we can do the same process, but we can actually create a purchase order or an AP. So we can do that as a template. And we can choose any marketing document that we want in our templates. So we can actually create the recurring here, just like we used to have in financials. And we can go ahead and actually do now for anything. So in this case, we can do the AP invoice instead of doing the journal entry, or the AR invoice or down payment. So all the marketing documents are available. You can also do inventory transfers request and goods issue and goods receipt. OK, so that concludes our presentation today. What we talked about was the functionality of the recurring transactions in SAP Business One. As we said, this webinar is being recorded. It will be available on our website. You can visit us at www.michelgroup.com to view this, plus the others in our training series. And we thank you for your time.